have. Because <laughs> we know too much. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I wish I didn't know what I, you know, I, I know, you know, doing this type of show, I I get guests on all the time, and then sometimes I, 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 I'm I done with the show, right? I go, go to bed, and I can't sleep. Well, if it's any comfort to you, I am a long, I'm a short-term pessimist and a long-term optimist. I, I do not think the world is going to end. Uh, I do think that we will, con- I mean, we've been going through an awful lot for a bunch of years. I don't think it's going to let up anytime real soon. Um, but uh, if we pay attention, we'll get through it. But most people ignore things. Like, I'm sorry, the people that are continuing to beat to build right on the beaches or people who develop an entire residential community right on the edge of the most active volcano in the world, um, where is the common sense? Well, especially when they start crying and saying, my house was this, like, uh, absorbed by, you know, the lava. Like, uh, there mm-hmm. was a lady in Hawaii the other day on the news crying that they just lost everything they had. Well, why would you have a house there? Seriously. I, I mean, See, that's not making sense. You know, we have to be sensible. I mean, it's pretty hard to be protected if we don't operate any common sense. And there's certain places we just shouldn't be living. Well, you know what? I, I'm at my age. I'm, I'm to the, you know 66 years old, so I'm not young anymore. So if I wanted to go to and live Florida, I'm not going to worry about it being underwater. But you know, if I was 21 years old and and moved to Florida and bought some property in certain parts of Florida, I'd be worried about in 20 years from now if I had to you know uh, learn how to swim. Right. Absolutely. So. We just use, we, you know, everybody just needs to have more sense about what they do. Yeah. Now, I'm kind of concerned about the earth, uh, you know, the, uh, the wobble of the earth, uh, what's going on with that. I'm kind of worried about uh, polar uh, shifts, uh, you know, uh, magnetic uh, reversal. Um, you know, I'm just wondering what that will do to, you know, I I think our electrical system in this country and probably Canada and probably three-fourths of the world, uh, you know, would probably be gone. Probably. Probably. And and I have a couple reactions to it. One, we're long overdue for a polar shift. I mean, it's been 780,000 years since we've had one. And that's a very long time not, you know, to not have one. And we've been, but it may not be as awful as we think because, you know, there's this gradual rotation that we're seeing. I mean, they've had to change the uh, directional signs on airports because it's changed enough that uh, uh, the pilots need different directional signs. And that began to happen a number of years ago. Oh, yeah. I mean, if they went by what they had 10 years ago, they wouldn't even be in the same airport to land. They'd be in probably another state. Right. So uh, it's changing, and maybe it will just continue to change at a slow, steady course. Yeah, that, but the thing is, when you read about it, though, I mean, if it went to all of a sudden slow and then all of a sudden it, it shifted... I mean, you know, one person, one scientist will say, oh, it'll cause like all these major winds that'll, you know, destroy and and virtually wipe everybody off of Earth. And you hear all this other stuff and you hear all this other stuff. And yet I've never heard anything really positive about if all of a sudden there is a flip. And nobody who is talking about this has ever lived through one uh, because they were so long ago. And we tend to, I don't know... It's sort of like worry is like, uh, there's an old song about worrying is like a rocking chair. You rock, go back and forth and you get nowhere. And I, I simply will not put my energy into fretting about things that none of us have any ability to deal with. Now, if there's things you want to do as far as, you know, it's just smart to have like a food supply. It's just smart to have some you know, some backup systems, even if it's just because there's foul weather. But too many people are missing their lives right now, worrying too much about these kind of things over which we have no control. None. I mean, I can't change what's going to happen. I can't change. Right. And why why should you lose sleep over something that you absolutely can't change? I'm more concerned about the weather, what's going on over that. And I do blame a lot of that. On cars and the government and a lot of things. I think they should have 
tighten up, you know, uh, regulations for, you know, like China, for example, dumps so much pollution in the air atmosphere that, you know, that is probably the number one killer of of anything. If if it's going to cause us to go into a mini ice age, I mean, all the toxins, toxins and all the pollution that's just getting dumped into the atmosphere. If nothing else, it is totally bad for our health. Oh, yeah. That alone should be motivation to want us to, you know, clean it up and make it better. Well, again, now we're almost out of time. Because as far as the weather goes, I think there's multiple factors causing the kinds of changes. The wobbling of the earth is changing it. Um, the, you know, it's pretty convincing there, is a, uh, there are outside planets that are coming very close, and they're having a pull. Uh, or a push or whatever, uh, they're, they're changing our energy field. Um, our ionosphere is getting thinner. Uh, you know, all our, so many different factors. It's not just one thing. Nothing anymore is simple. Nothing, you very seldom can just point your finger and say, that's the reason for it. Well, you can't. Um, you can't because there's so many things going on. And you know what, though? I will say, a lot of that, our knowledge of all these things that's going on, blame it on the Internet. You mean the fact that we know it? Yeah. I mean, you know, you go on the Internet and, you know, it, it's doomsday all the time on the Internet. And if you, if, if what's really funny is people love to predict the future. And if you go back, some of these days I may just do an inventory, how many times people are wrong. And they always are painting a bad scenario and it doesn't happen do you realize how many times you know people have said you know the world is going to end or this asteroid's going to hit or you know whatever it might be and it doesn't happen now one of these days these predictions you know a prediction is going to come true but not because somebody's brilliant and uh, happened to know about it there's been too many false predictions and so again why should we mess up our minds and not enjoy the moment and not enjoy our lives now, getting lost in these predictions that people are making, and they're so often wrong. Well, they're all wrong. I mean, look how many people, have, you know, one church here recently, well, he's dead now, uh, the uh, minister of the church, but he got people to sell everything they have, you know, and donate the money to the church and all this stuff. And he made all these predictions when the world was going to come to the end and only his members of the church would be saved and all this stuff. There's, been, there, there's actually been a number of those people. I don't think I could come up with their names right now, but there's... There's been quite a few. Oh, also, yeah. not not just the ministers, but some of the uh, um, New Age has become outdated. But even some of the New Age leaders have talked that way. And, you know, they've taken their acolytes off to a, a place in Montana or someplace like that uh, to wait out the uh, coming of the end, and it doesn't happen. So here people have messed up sometimes years of their life living in a cave or whatever, missing their life because they're afraid it might end. Well, you know, back about uh, in the mid-90s, he used to listen to Art Bell, and he used to have a Major Dames on who was a remote, uh, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, and he kept talking about the kill shot, you know, and, and it's going to happen soon. Well, I had a friend that moved to, uh, uh, let's see, was it uh, Australia? because that was one of the places it was supposed to be saved. So he sold everything he had, ended up in the divorce, everything. He moved there. Guess what? It's it's never happened. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, people need to take things each day as it comes. I mean, hey, one day, you don't know, an asteroid could slam into Earth tomorrow. And and, And what do we do about it? There's nothing we can do about it. I know. Now, so let's let's enjoy our lives while we got them, right? Yeah, and go on to your website, you know, and, and, and do some good reading. And there's a, actually there's a lot of upbeat stuff there. I, I don't tend to uh, get deep into the the creepy, icky stuff. Now you mentioned I, I do cover it. I do cover it, but I don't do it in a you know I, I'm not awashed with that. Now you did mention underground bases or bases in uh, North Carolina area. I didn't know anything about that. Uh, we got a couple minutes. Can you just tell people a little bit about that because that got me a little. I've actually, I, I actually did a, a, a book on it, and uh, I didn't intend to, but I began to get so much information that, and I wasn't finding it 
anywhere else. And so when that happens, then I figure then I need to get the information out there. And it's got a kind of a long title. If somebody wants it, they can go to um, uh, Amazon, just type in my name, which is Mary Joyce, which is a lot easier to remember than the title. But the title is um, Underground uh, uh, Bases Hidden in North Carolina Mountains. And uh, basically I talk about five facilities here in these mountains. And uh, like I said, I didn't intend to write the book. I didn't even think I was going to learn about this stuff. And it started one day uh, at the time I was working at a, a place here in town, and it was this, the kind of a place where you get to talk to people a lot. And this one couple would periodically come in every once in a while, kind of uh, gingerly start talking to me about UFOs and things like that. And eventually I said, well, why don't we get together? It sounds like you have a story I could do for the website. And when I got together with them, that wasn't the reason they wanted to talk to me. Uh, they were the first ones that told me about one of the underground bases. And uh, Now, what are the bases? Is it used for, like, for UFOs? Was it uh, our government, or is it something it's else? Our gov- it's our government. Um, w- there's a possibility that uh, there's cooperation with some aspects of the... With, with some aspects of our government and some aspects of the ETs. Um, there have been UFOs um, repeatedly seen near some of these places. And so we sense there may be cooperation going on. Oh, wow. And and there's a couple of those type bases in North Carolina? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. What, what? And, and the, the, there's one that's under the uh, Great Smoky Mountain National Park. That's probably the most recent one that, because we were aware of things being built. The other ones we weren't, you know, we learned about them after that. Uh, there's one under Mount Mitchell, which is the tallest mountain east of the Mississippi. Uh, there's one under the Balsam Mountain Ridge. Uh, there's one under Sugarloaf Mountain, uh, which is near one of the state parks. Um, and there's one under Linville Gorge. Um, so, you know, there's there's quite a bit of information. Well, you and, know... The I, people that that I got to, uh, you know, who who told me this kind of information, uh, they took a long time seeing if they could trust me before they would tell their story. I mean, I got checked out, too. It wasn't just me checking them out. Oh, yeah. So uh, they're not going to just talk to just anybody. I have a, a truck driver who wants to come on to my show, and he was delivering to a lot of um, uh, some of these bases. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say where because he's not on the show yet, but what he has told me that, you know, these bases don't exist and that he would have to go in, you know, and go into a, basically a mountain, uh, and then, you know, sit in, you know, his, uh, cab of his truck. He could not get out. They had armed guards all around the truck. They would unload whatever he, he was carrying. He didn't even know what it was. And then he'd be esc- uh, escorted out of the, uh, you know, the underground base. And uh, he said he was so scared uh, that after a couple of those type of things, he just said, no, I'm not doing it anymore. Well, people sometimes think these are very small places, and they're not. Um, the One of them is six stories deep and city size, and they're totally self-sufficient. The one under Mount Mitchell uh, is is deeper than that or has many more levels than that. And the U.N. Um, has been seen around that particular facility. Um, you know, it, we're just about out of time, so it's probably too much to get into. But uh, uh, back in 1972, uh, when Nixon was president, a treaty was signed. It was the World Heritage Treaty. And we essentially turned over certain pieces of land like the... Uh, uh, Smoky Mountain National Park, to the U.N. And so technically, we don't have the jurisdiction over it. And people who get into the backwoods and, and, and hunt or, you know, take their, you know, get back there for one reason or another, will sometimes see U.N. troops or even foreign troops practicing in the backwoods of the mountains. And uh, that's being allowed because we don't own that land. That's crazy for, you know, any 
any president do anything like that? And, and we've covered we've covered that. I mean, I, I keep saying we.